Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Carrie. Today's video is one that people have been asking me to do, and so I wanted to go ahead and get it done for you guys. I will say it might be a little bit long. We are going to be walking through step by step how to create a digital bullet journal on an iPad. So again, it may be a little bit long just because I wanted to go ahead and do it all at once because I'm the type of person where I want to be able to start something and finish it at the same time. And if I broke it down into multiple videos, I don't know how long it would take me to get all of the videos out. So instead, I am filming it all at one time. I'm going to walk you guys through start to finish how to create it and put it into good notes. And so yeah, if you are wanting to break it down a little bit, I will have timestamps in the description box below so you can pause, you can jump ahead, you can go back to whatever you think you need to redo if you decide to create one of these on your own. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead, jump right into it. Uh, yeah. So at the very beginning of it, it's important to know I'm using an iPad Pro. If As long as your iPad has a Apple Pencil capability. Um, I mean, you don't have to have an Apple Pencil capability. You can use your fingers, but it's a lot easier with the Apple Pencil, um, just a digital bullet journal in general, or any kind of stylus, really. Um, but I am using the iPad Pro. It's the 10 and a half inch and in Apple Pencil. Um, you will need to be using Keynote for this, which is an app that comes on the iPad. And then for actual bullet journaling or planning or whatever, you end up using this for, um, you're, I'm gonna be using good notes. And so those are really the things that you're gonna need. An iPad, um, a Keynote, good notes, some sort of stylus, or you can use your finger. There is a way to do this on an Android device. I don't own any Android devices, so I'm not gonna be able to walk you through that. Um, so I just kinda wanna put that out there <laughs> at the beginning. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna teach you how to create a digital bullet journal in Keynote. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, obviously, is open up Keynote. This is a basically PowerPoint app for the iPad. Um, you are gonna make a new presentation, and I generally go with the white presentation just because it's the easiest to kind of um, edit. Uh, the first thing that I do is go ahead and just delete these main things. Um, Keynote does take a little bit of getting used to as far as what your pencil does and what your fingers do, um, so you might have to play around with that a little bit, but it doesn't take too long to get the handle of. All right, so we've got our base presentation, and the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is create a background if you want to. I tend to leave my backgrounds white, but you can put like a wood grain on it, you can put marble on it to kind of mimic a countertop of some sort. Um, I leave it white. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is create the outside of your bullet journal. So, in a regular notebook, when you open it up, you see this like kind of black outline. It's the outside, the covers of the journal. Um, so you're gonna kind of want to mimic that here. Again, you don't have to do this, but this is what a lot of people do to give it a more realistic feel. Um, and so what you're gonna do that using the shapes feature. Most of the stuff that you do to create this is going to be in the shapes feature. So you are going to hit the plus sign, go to the shapes tab, and then I like to do rounded edges. Again, takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, and then you are going to size that however you like. All right, in order to change the color, I'm gonna edit that just a bit more. In order to change the color, hit the little paintbrush, go to style, and then from there you can change the fill color. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm actually gonna do like a, let's see, I'll do a grainy color, um, just simply so you can see kind of what I'm doing as we add things. Um, but you can pick anything that you want. There's different colors here, there's a color wheel, so feel free to play with that as you want. Um, some people get really detailed with this and will add stitching along the edges, but I'm just gonna keep it as basic as possible. Um, so you can add um, the outside of it, and then if you wanna add borders, go ahead. I'm not gonna do that for this purpose, but um, feel free to do whatever you want creatively with that. 
All right, so we have our background and now we are going to be making a page. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add another shape. There you go. Again, you can do this any way that you want to. You don't have to do it specifically like I am, um, but this is how I'm gonna do it for now. Okay, and then you are gonna go ahead and change this inside because this is technically the paper um, to white. Okay, so now you can kind of see it coming together a little bit more. Um, if you want to go ahead and add a little more detail, you can add a shadow to it. Um, and then this one is kind of, kind of looks more like paper. So I'm gonna add that shadow to it. The shadows are just in that paintbrush again, the style, and then you hit shadow. You can also add borders if you want to. Again, you don't have to. Um, so that is my shadow and that is what it looks like so far. You can leave it plain, you can add lines. I like to add dot grids. You can add a picture by hitting the plus button and then you can either insert from your images here, you see all my little like selfies and craziness, <laughs> um, or you can insert from any sort of iCloud device. It's iCloud, Google, whatever you wanna use. Um, so I'm gonna go into my iCloud drive and I'm gonna open up my bullet journal tab and open up my dot grid. So from there, I am going to scale that down so that it fits right into the middle. Now, what you may need to do here, you can't really see it on here because it's white, kind of mixed with white. What I did was I made the dot grid image a little bit bigger than the page, and then you go to format, so it's that paintbrush again, and edit the mask. Now, what the mask is gonna do is it's going to resize your image wherever you want it to go. So I want mine to be pretty centered. And so you just kind of adjust the mask and then when you hit done, you'll see that the dot grid is actually only within where that mask was. Um, and so that way it's not all over the page, if that makes sense. So any picture you can do that. It's essentially like cropping something without having to crop it. Um, it just, the mask shows the program exactly where you want that image to be instead of having to adjust the image to make it fit. Yeah. So. We are going to do the same thing on the other side. You can copy this. You can, let's go back, because I did not mean to move that. Then from there, back again, hard press and paste, and then move it to the other side um, so that it's as even as possible. And there you go, so now you have two sides of that. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do, if you wanna prevent the pieces from moving around like they just did essentially, um, I'm actually gonna click that, go to the settings, and then I'm gonna lock it. I'm gonna do the same thing with this, um, with the white. I'm gonna go ahead and go in and lock it so that way it doesn't move around. Um, here, I may as well go ahead and lock these as well so they don't move again. All right, so now you can see everything is locked. Um, this means that if I click on something, it's not gonna move around, it's gonna move the entire thing and that's kind of what we want for right now. Okay, next step, we are going to be adding a center line. You don't have to do this, but this is also one of those things that makes people feel like this is closer to being an actual journal. Um, so you just, again, go to the add button, go to shapes, and then hit the line. And then I'm just gonna center that right up. You'll see that um, Keynote will show you kind of where center is. Um, I'm gonna move that up just a little bit, move that down and see how that looks. Okay, um, now what I'm gonna do is edit the center line and I'm gonna go ahead and make it a gray color because it's not supposed to be 
black. It's supposed to be something that looks kind of like two pages are coming together. So I'm going to make it gray by going to that style button again, um, making the color gray, and then I'm going to add a shadow as well but I'm gonna adjust that shadow and make it only on one side. You can adjust this however you want to, whatever way looks best for you, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it like that. And then I may decrease the opacity just a little bit. All right, so now you've got your basis for your digital bullet journal. The next thing that we are going to do is add tabs. So all of this, yes, is going to go on one, one slide, I guess, and it seems kind of counterintuitive, but it'll make sense a little bit later, um, but all of our work is going to be going on this one slide. So the first thing that you're going to want to do as far as adding tabs and things like that is be thinking about how many tabs you want. Most of these digital bullet journals are going to have a few on this side and then maybe the months of the year on this side, and so that's what we're going to kind of do right now. The first thing that you want to do to do that, again, we are going into our shapes. You're going to pick this rounded corner one, and then we are going to move it over to the side. Um, you'll see that it is in front of the pages. So in order to eliminate that, just go to your settings, and then you move it from back to front and kind of go from there. You can see that it's still underneath the dotted grid there and above the white page. And so we're gonna move it back again. And there we go. It is above the blue, but below the pages. Um, in order to make that a little bit more realistic looking, we're gonna go back to the paintbrush, back to style. And then we are going to add a shadow per usual. And there you go. So it is still blue. Uh, if you want to adjust the color, I do that every single time. If you want to adjust the color, go ahead and go in again to the paintbrush and change it to whatever color you want. We will go ahead and just do a, I don't want to do white because I want it to stand out just so you can see it. Um, let's go ahead and do, let's see what gray looks like. We'll do a gray for now. You can do these any color that you want. This is just for educational purposes. Um, now, so there's gonna be five, four or five of these on this side. Again, it just depends on what you wanna do. The easiest way to do this is copy and paste. So you're gonna copy, you're gonna paste, you're gonna move it to where you want it to go. And then, again, arrange, and then put it underneath you're gonna put it underneath the tab above it, if that makes sense. So you're really just gonna to have to kind of play with how you want it to be layered. If you have a keyboard like I do, you there are some shortcuts in order to do that. Um, a little bit easier so you can see and you're not covering it up. Um, but the, the key to making it look realistic is making sure that you're getting your layers correct. Um, so we're just gonna do that again. I'm gonna delete that, <laughs> do that again paintbrush, arrange, all the way down. And again, paintbrush, arrange, all the way down. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all these. I'm gonna, in order to select multiple things, you hold one thing that's selected and then you can select multiple things. And once you do that, um, we'll group them for now move them down like this so you can see the tabs but they're kind of right in the middle um, and then I'm actually going to just tap on that again and I'm gonna ungroup them and you'll see why later. Alright so the more that I look at this the more I kind of see that the white paper is a little bit too big you can't quite see some of the tabs as well as I would like so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna unlock these and I'm going to select this, I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to group these together for right now. We are going to adjust them just a bit so that way you can see these tabs a little bit better. And then we'll move this over, center it up, maybe a tad bigger. Alrighty. righty. 
All right, so now that looks a little bit better. And again, it's just gonna be kind of trial and error, whatever you wanna do, um, but go ahead and keep adjusting it as you need to. So we've got these right tabs, we've got the center, now it's time to make the left tabs. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm actually going to um, lock all of these main pieces again, um, just so that way they're not constantly moving on me because you don't want that. Um, so we are going to lock them all and we are going to move on to the tabs on the left hand side. You're literally gonna do the same exact thing. You're just gonna put them on the left and they're probably gonna be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna go in here um, to edit them. I actually don't really like to move them horizontally. I just like to adjust them vertically for this. Um, I don't know why, I think it just takes away a step. Um, but we're gonna do that. We're gonna move it over. We are gonna go to the paintbrush we're gonna style it, fill color with that gray again, add a shadow, and then we are gonna arrange it to go again all the way back. Okay. And then we're gonna copy and paste it and make 12 of them for the left-hand side that represent the months. There we go. Okay, so we've got our months over there. You can change the color of them if you want to. Again, um, you just go select whichever one you wanna change, hit the little paintbrush, go to style, and then fill it with whatever color. But again, for educational sake, we are gonna just leave them gray and plain. Okay, so your next step is to decide whether or not you want to add tabs on the top as well. I tend to add a tab on the top just so I have a cover page, and I'll show you guys that in just a minute. Um, so we will go ahead and add a top tab. And you can do that as many times as you want. I'm gonna leave it at one for now, um, but if you have other things that you think you would want to be tabbed up here, go ahead and do it. Okay, so now we are going to set up the links. Um, I know there's only one page, and so we are going to go ahead and put in some uh, placeholder pages so that we can add the links to these pages. So in order to do that, you're gonna go into these three dots right here, go to the light table view, and then you want to add, add a blank one, blank slide. Okay, and then you're gonna go in and duplicate slides for as many tabs as you have. So I have definitely 12 tabs for each month, one tab for the cover page, and then four tabs to the side. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 tabs. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this 17 times just to give me a couple extras if I need it. Eighteen, nineteen, and I'll show you what I do with these pages in a minute. Um, so you're gonna hit this button again. You're gonna go to your slide view, and now you'll see you have all of these empty pages. And now we are going to assign links to some of these things. So the way clickable links works is that anytime you click on an element that has a link, it will go to wherever that link is assigned to. So for these cases, these links are assigned to different slides. So um, you are gonna start with number one. So for me, the first clickable thing is gonna be this top tab because it's my front. So you're just gonna click on it, hit link, link to slide, slide one, All right? You're gonna click on this, if this is the way you want it to go. I generally do months and then tabs. So you're gonna click the second one, link, link to slide two. Click on the second one, link, link to slide three, and just go in order till you run out of things to click on.
Alrighty, so I am quickly going to go through and just double check everything. I know that I did hit um, to link to slide number 15 twice and so I went ahead and fixed that um, but now your links are all set up alright so the hardest part is almost over the next thing that we are going to do is label each of these tabs this part is my least favorite part because I honestly I'm just full disclosure I have a really hard time um, rotating things in Keynote which is kind of frustrating um, it, it's hard so I'll show you how to add text and then I'll show you kind of how I do it um, so you can hit the plus button we are going to hit the text button and then if you want to edit what it says um, or what style it is you just go in to the paintbrush again hit text and then make it the correct size um, here's the style um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a fill. Um, I usually have no fill. Um, and then you'll see the text there. At that point, you just double click. And then I'm just going to do J for January because, again, um, I honestly have been messing around with it for a little bit and I still have no idea how I rotated it previously. So if I even did, I'd have to go back and check. Um, J for January. And then we're just going to continue to do that again. Right, and then you're going to go down the line and continue to do that. I'm not going to do it here just because for time's sake, um, but yeah, you're going to go ahead and label all the way down this side. You can label all the way down this side as well if you'd like to. I keep these blank because I'm going to be able to utilize a journal for more than just one thing. Um, I want to be able to go back and say, okay, I want to label these tabs differently elsewhere. What I do to kind of sidestep labeling here is I utilize the bookmark feature in GoodNotes, and I'll show you guys how to do that later. Um, but basically, you'll just go in and fill out all of your labels, and once they're all done, then you are ready to move on. Another way that you can do it, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these because I really don't like the way that it looks. Another way that you can do it is go in and use your uh, writing tool and literally write it in. So, J, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and then again, I don't label these sides, and then this will be, let's say, front. There we go. All right, so your labels are done, and we are ready to move on to the next step. This part is pretty much the easiest part. You are going to go in, and you are gonna unlock everything that has been locked so far. and you are going to hard press, select all, you're going to copy, and then you are going to paste this into every single slide. It is super important, if you learn nothing else, it is super, super important that everything you want to have on every single page is on the slide that you've created. Because once you've copied and pasted, there's not really any going back without a lot a lot of time so make sure that everything that you want to have on every single page is here so that way it's included in that copy so you've copied it all hard press paste see so you can see here I didn't unlock the the uh, blue so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna unlock this blue or green or whatever color it is and then I'm gonna reselect all There we go. So you're just going to go through every single one of these slides and paste it. The reason you cannot duplicate is because you have already assigned links to each of these tabs and the links are associated to different slides. So if you were to get rid of a slide or add a slide, um, adding a slide wouldn't be a problem, but if you get rid of a slide it's going to throw off links and whatnot. You're not going to be able to duplicate things and have the links stick. The slides need to already be in place, so that way you can assign them. If you were to try to assign something um, to link to slide 21, for example, there is no slide 21 and it wouldn't even show up as an option. So you really need to make sure that 
you have enough slides and that you are copying and pasting instead of attempting to duplicate um, in order to make it faster. Copying and pasting can take a little bit of time, but um, it's the way to do it in order to keep those links intact. And that's the whole point of this type of digital bullet journal. Alrighty, so you could stop here because technically this is all done. Um, but what I like to do personally is go back to that first page. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these pages right here. I'm gonna click on this left side of the dotted grid and I'm gonna delete that. I'm also going to adjust this center and then let's go ahead and adjust the way that this is as well. Um, so this way it looks kind of like the front of a notebook. And this is totally a personal preference. You don't have to do this, um, but I'm doing it just because I think it looks cool. Um, and then over here, um, let's go ahead and edit that. You can add sticky notes, you can add a picture, whatever you want. These links are still intact, but that way this looks more like the front of a journal. And this is also assigned to the front tab. And then you will go in and if you want to go ahead and add your monthlies in now, you can. Um, just make sure they're assigned to the right things or you can wait until you put it in good notes. For now, we're just gonna leave them blank. I did add some last pages and that's because I'm gonna go in and and um, delete the dots off of one of them and keep the dots on the other. These are spare pages for you to copy and paste once you use into good notes and we'll show you that in a minute. So now this is basically done. What you're gonna do is go to the three dots you can do this multiple ways. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it because I like to know where my stuff is. Um, and then I'm gonna export, export as a PDF. And then I'm gonna save it to my iCloud Drive. You can export it directly into GoodNotes if you want to. I like to do it this way. It's just a personal preference. So now, let's open up GoodNotes. Alrighty, so now that you're in GoodNotes, you are going to click the Add button. You're gonna hit Import from your iCloud Drive. Let's hope that it is already in there. Yep, and then open up your notebook. And there you have it. Your notebook is in GoodNotes. Okay, now, tips for quick use. Um, if you want to go ahead and add some things to like pages to your main sections you can do that by hitting these four squares up here go to this last page or the page before that so keep keep in mind that page 18 if this is how you did it was your dot grid you are going to edit select it copy it hit done and then go to, we'll just for example sake, um, put it right after that first page. Paste copied pages. So now you've got a blank page right there um, and it's just directly afterwards. So I'm gonna write some things on some of these pages so you can see kind of what it will look like. We're gonna trash that. All right, so we know that this is the front, so that this is January, February, March, April. You don't have to do this. If you want to add monthlies here, you definitely can. But again, for the sake of time, um, I'm not going to do that. October, November, December. And then this is tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four. All right, and then that's the end. Okay, perfect. So in order to click on these links, this read only has to be clicked. I messed this up so many times. This is my biggest point of frustration. This is the button that needs to be clicked in order for you to just click on tab. So you will see that if I hit that, it goes to the front. We've got a month, September, October, November, December. 
and then I'll show you what it looks like when you recopy those pages now. So we will go back here, hit the plus button, and if I want to add a weekly page to May, paste copied pages, done. We'll go to May and then you'll swipe and you'll see that blank page there. Now, the way that I utilize bookmarks for these is once I figure out what I want this to be, I will go up here, add the bookmark, and say that I want it to be um, recipes, okay? So now if I view bookmarks, you'll see recipes are here. If you add pages, this page number updates. Um, so that's just kind of the way that I do it. But basically, that is how you create your own bullet journal. You can do it however you want to once you get here, um, but that is the general walkthrough of how this is done. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I know it's a little bit different when somebody is actually doing it with you. There tends to be a little bit more, well for my part, rambling because I'm trying to figure out which way to present it the best. Um, but hopefully walking through this with you was helpful. Um, again, I will leave timestamps in the description bar so you can jump back and forth to figure out um, what parts you may need to spend a little more time on. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. And I hope that you are able to create your own digital bullet journal and love it. And yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you're not subscribed, already, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And if you want to see any more specific videos on one of these parts, let me know and I can dive in a little bit deeper. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.